Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here in London at the Beaumont, which is in Mayfair, London. And I'm here with Janis Sorensen, who's the general manager, and we're going to talk a little bit about this fantastic sort of secret hotel in many ways that many people may not know about, but you should. And this is Insider Travel Report. Now, Giannis, I arrived here yesterday, and I have to say uh, I was surprised, delighted. The service is amazing in this hotel and the decor and everything about it. Let's talk, first of all, about the history of this hotel. Mm -hmm. You've been around for about four years now? Yeah, three and a half years. The hotel opened in September 2014. It's the first hotel of Jeremy King and Chris Corbin who founded the Caprice and the Ivy in the 1980s. Those and are the restaurants. Exactly, yeah. are very well known as well for the Walsley that then subsequently opened in 2003. So three and a half years uh, the hotel has been open now. We feature 73 beautiful rooms and suites. Mm -hmm. And the history of the hotel is a very interesting one. Um, Jeremy King found the building at the time, which is just steps away from Selfridges. And as a matter of fact, the hotel, at the time it was built, the building in 1926 was the service station to Selfridges. So that means this was like the warehouse or something for well, all of the... It was a car park, really. A car, oh, yes. a car park. So, it was a car park. So yeah. we're, we're in a car park. That's exactly, <laughs> yes. So the historic facade is an art deco facade. Mm -hmm. And when the building was discovered... What Jeremy has always taken the inspiration of his restaurants and businesses from the history of the, the environment. Mm -hmm. And because in 1926 and because it was a car park, there wasn't really a history as a hotel. Mm -hmm. So Jeremy made one up. So this is, the, we are living, the Beaumont is actually a created history of a hotel, but you did it very well, I got to tell you. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's actually the story of Jimmy Beaumont. Okay. And at the time the building was constructed in 1926, Jeremy was thinking, well, what was happening in London? And in London, you know, at the time was rather depressing, not mm -hmm. so much happened, but in New York, there was prohibition. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy Beaumont was at the time a very famous hotelier in New York who got rather frustrated about, you know, prohibition, not being able to be the hotelier that he wanted. And he got to a point where he said, I'm going to leave the industry. Mm -hmm. Luckily, very wealthy clients convinced him not to leave the industry, but to move to London and to build his hotel in Mayfair. Ah, so here we are in wonderful Mayfair. And exactly. so it's a New York influenced hotel in Mayfair. Right? Well, in many ways, the hotel is a love letter to the United States and also a love letter to Art Deco. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that we do from the design and also from the service delivery are really inspired and we often ask ourselves, what Jimmy would have done. Uh, yes, well, we've seen a lot of that. And as you go around the hotel, the public rooms are definitely Art Deco and very evocative mm -hmm. of that period. Talk a little bit about those public rooms and what you offer. Yes, um, in many ways, we are a very big hotel on an intimate scale. Mm -hmm. um, we feature, of course, a beautiful restaurant, The Colony, which was a very famous restaurant, you know, times ago in Madison Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, the Cub Room, which was the speakeasy of the store club during Prohibition. Mm -hmm. A beautiful bar, which is the American bar, or people in the know, they call it Jimmy's. Mm -hmm. The beautiful spa, which is sort of like a New York City sports club in the 1920s as well. So it's a very complete product on a very small scale because we only have 73 rooms. So in many ways, this is almost, you know, has the feeling of a private club. Yeah, no, and, and, and the cub room do, is definitely a, a private club, and we had dinner last night in the restaurant, and the menu is definitely a throwback to sort of a very American grill steakhouse, right? Yes. It really features, you know, dishes from both sides of the Atlantic. So, of course, we are in London. Uh, Jeremy and Chris are British restaurateurs, and we really celebrate that. But we also took a lot of inspiration of dishes that, you know, might be a little bit forgotten. You know, we have bananas foster on the menu, so we would flambe. Uh, we have a great selection of our sort of do-it-yourself sundaes. Uh, there's a lot of... We, we had that last night. Oh, I'm glad like you that. did. I'm yeah. glad you did. There's a lot of theater in the restaurant. We flambe, we prepare steak to at the table, uh, you know, we feel it at Dover so We really bef feel that the atmosphere is, is just such an important contributor to somebody's experience. And Jeremy's restaurants and Chris's restaurants have always been so inclusive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if people from all walks of life, uh, you know, people with all sorts of different plans for the evening. And we're the backdrop, we're the facilitator for people to have these experiences.
experiences. Yeah, and then we had drinks in the American bar, uh, and we actually saw a very famous writer there last night. It was very interesting. And uh, uh, but it, t the the decor is amazing. And t if you could talk a little bit about, because the walls of the hotel are filled with. Mm old photographs mm -hmm. of personalities and stars and exactly. I, you know I, it's hard some i see no and some i don't and then the all, all and the paintings are very much into the art deco period very much so and uh, lauren uh, jeremy's wife was very involved at the time as well sourcing the furniture for the hotel mm -hmm. and there's 1700 pieces of art all through the hotel mm -hmm. and you know they're Jimmy's friends. So when you even see in the colony, we have these beautiful caricatures of John Matos and these, you know, murals of sporting events. And if you look at some of the caricatures, they even would have like Gary Cooper who leaves a little note for Jimmy, ah. you know, for him to see. But we don't exploit the story. This is, the story is not written down. It's like, you know, we share the story with people that think would like the story and then you'll find references all through the hotel that remind you of Jimmy if you go to the cub room there might be you know a small picture with him and his high school sweetheart mm. but you only know if you know yeah well it was an amazing just to look around you can spend hours just looking at all the mm. photographs and different artwork uh, and you know as you look at the rest of the hotel and you also have here you have a full spa right yes we have a full service spa we manage the spa ourselves we're very fortunate to have great collaborations we work with pie skincare which is an organic brand and they actually produce here in london we're very fortunate to work with abigail james who is you know maya is the uk's leading facialist bart shima who is i mean and people travel to the hotel to have treatments with Bart. He is a medical acupuncturist, oh. and uh, he's done great things for, for many, many people. And I always highly recommend that people come and stay with us, that they definitely try to see either, you know, Abigail and, uh, and Bart, of course, but also our very talented team of therapists. We have a traditional hammam table, so we perform a very traditional hammam treatment, but we also feature our own barber shop. Uh, we have a manicure and pedicure room, of course, so it's a very complete spa yet again, but with 73 rooms, you know, it's always very private and it's always very available to guests, yeah, as well. is our 24 hour gym. Yeah, no, I have to go down there. We've not yet seen that, but I'll see that a little later, and we'll see that on camera. Uh, the um, the other thing is, obviously, to talk about the accommodations, and we're here in a very special suite right yes, now. Ta are. Let's talk about this suite, first of all. So we're in Room, and Room is uh, a piece of art designed by Anthony Gormley. Mm -hmm. When in Westminster, the council that we're in, the borough, um, you create a new building or you do a major renovation, you have to add a public piece of art. Mm -hmm. So we created this suite, Jeremy created the suite with Anthony Gormley together, which is we're in the main body of the suite, the living room, and then you walk out of the building into the Crouching Man, which is a sculpture uh, it's 10 meters high. Inside, there's sort of a puzzle of smoked wood from the back forest. And the only uh, piece of furniture, or the only piece really of decoration in this sculpture is a white bed. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have the Bowman B logo on it. So it's, it's a complete, you know, sort of immersion in, in that sculpture, uh, being in the belly of that crouching man. And, and we have a lot of people who, who very much enjoy the experience and who have heard of Anthony Gormley, of course, and who mm -hmm. come to experience this, this very, very unique feature. It is the only inhabitable sculpture in That's the world. That's what I was saying, the only place you can sleep in a sculpture, not exactly. too bad. Yes. Now, but then the regular, the, your, your, your standard rooms and your suites are, are, again, Art Deco. They really have everything. I, I'm staying in one with a terrace overlooking the square below. Yes. Uh, it's, it's really lovely. So talk about the features of, of these mm. rooms. You know, Jeremy and Chris have been traveling for many, many years, and it was always the motivation to build the hotel that they would like to stay in. Mm -hmm. So the rooms are really designed with the guest and the guest experience in mind. Mm -hmm. So the working desk has exactly the right height. The table that suits to the working desk has exactly the right height. Mm -hmm. The light switches are easy kip switches and they're actually easy to maneuver. Yeah, I have to tell you, and I won't say the hotel, but uh, uh, some hotels now go with these digital switches yes. and I, for the life of me, just give me a switch. Mm. It's a lot easier and it's, it's, it's click on, click off. Mm. 
it's wonderful high tech in many cases, but I think it's a lot, it's difficult for the guests sometimes. Mm-hmm. And you want the wall socket to charge your phone at the height, and you don't want to move the bedside table to eventually find it. You know, technology is there to enable. Mm-hmm. You can stream media. We have HDMI ports. We have USB ports. But the curtain closes by hand. Mm-hmm. And technology is there for you to use if you would like it, right. but you don't have to use if you don't want to. Another feature that you might see in the rooms and in the room, in your room is a sliding door that separates the bedroom from the beautiful corridor where we have the full length mirror and the big wardrobe space, something that was very important for Jeremy and the beautiful bathroom. So mm. Jeremy is an early riser. So he realizes many people are an early riser, but your partner might not be. Yeah. So you want to sneak out of the bedroom slide this wooden door across and have that sentiment of being in a suite even though you have maybe an entry-level room. Mm -hmm. So is that element of privacy, added privacy, that was very important for Jeremy. Coffee and tea, making facilities Mm -hmm. in all the rooms. So there is a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, added benefits for people staying in these rooms, and they, you know, they just work. Well, and also you have a mini bar that's pretty much for free. You exactly. have uh, free movies on the television, yes. all these kind of things, and the TV is very much mm-hmm. high tech, which, mm-hmm. as opposed to the decor of the rest yes. of the room. So mm-hmm. there are a lot of uh, incredible little features that I yeah. think work very well. You know, with the movies, it's funny. When I arrived here, I realized that people watch around three times more movies, or start to watch three times more movies than in any other hotel I've worked in prior. And I thought, well, people really like to watch a movie, but when do you watch a movie? Well, you normally watch a movie a couple of minutes before you fall asleep. Yeah, that's but often people don't want to pay a certain amount of money for five minutes before they go to sleep. So we feel that people actually want to watch movies, they don't want to pay for them. Mm-hmm. And it really is an added value and an added amenity that people can just indulge in these couple of minutes of watching the film that they always wanted to see or something that they haven't seen for a long time before they just drift off into well, sleep. Well, I, I totally agree. And, and it is something that, uh, you know, at the end of a long day, touring or traveling or business, you really want to just zone out watching a movie. And exactly. generally, you do zone out. Yes. You, you fall asleep. But let, the final thing I want to ask you about is the location of the hotel, which is not too in Mayfair, uh, not too mm-hmm. far from, from Oxford, and not mm-hmm. too far from Selfridges. Uh, talk a little bit about that or where we are in London. Well, as you just said, being the service station to Selfridges at the time the building was constructed, we're literally steps away from Oxford Street. Mm-hmm. But we're very fortunate to be located at a small garden square called Brownhard Gardens. And all around the garden square, we have residential housing. The street in front of the hotel is a one-way street, and it's not a passage street. Mm-hmm. So even though we're steps away from Oxford Street, from Bond Street, from Hyde Park, in the heart of the Mayfair Village, People literally sleep with their windows open. Mm-hmm. And yes, the windows do open, and you can open the window in the room. That's amazing. And also, you have a. You, what, what is the square we're on right now? Brownheart Gardens. Brownheart Gardens. Yes. Is, so Brownheart Gardens, that's it. Yes. And, and, and then. It's actually a public square. So yeah. if you walk up to Brownheart Gardens, you'll find there's a little cafe, and people can sit there in the summer. But it's very quiet, yet it's very central. And you're really part of that little Mayfair Village community, being well, in the heart of London. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you. It's been a wonderful stay. Uh, the hotel is amazing. Uh, the service, and we didn't talk about that, but the service of your, your staff is just right up there uh, with any, any of the best hotels in the world. And uh, they know your name. Uh, they're interactive. And uh, I, I, after, with just 24 hours, I can tell that this hotel really works very well. Well, it's very personal. We really believe that hospitality comes from the heart and not from the boardroom. And I'm very fortunate to work with a very caring team and people who really have a genuine interest in, you know, ensuring that people who come and stay with us or come and have a meal with us, they really have the best time that they can have. And, you know, I always say that if you have a team that does the right thing, even if they're not supervised that right moment because they want to do the right thing, you know, you're more than halfway there. And I think you're all the way there. Thank you very much again for this day. Uh, We're going to explore the hotel a little more now. And uh, again, it's been wonderful to be here. Great. Thank you so much for coming and staying with us. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.